All right, Internet. This video is for you if you have a Nest thermostat and you are getting an overcurrent error. Uh, mine was specific. It was an E184 with absolutely no help from Nest, no help on any forums, and no help anywhere on the Internet to get this wonderful guy here in my garage up and going correctly. So, with that said, for me, this is my heater of choice. Obviously in the garage, having a big forced air furnace does wonders. But keeping connected so I can shut down in here, go inside, eat, and come back with these and keep temperature nice, or if I'm not going to come back out here, turn it off, is a beautiful thing. Also, I have issues with the pilot sometimes going out, so having the alerts from the Nest telling me when the heat is not up to temperature is also a good thing. Now, the issue that I ran into was the overcurrent situation. The overcurrent situation was because of two things was because of A, the gas valve, and up inside the control box, which you really can't see, is the heat sequencer relay. The two of those together on their load was more than the Nest could handle, and that thus gave you the E184 overcurrent error. I know the thermostat before was fine, I know my heater works fine, it was an issue of the Nest. So, this is again, proof of concept because it does work, as well as my riggings, as you can see, not the prettiest, but again, this is, me getting up and going and testing, this will be cleaned up in a little bit once I'm done making this video. So, if anybody wants to get exact part numbers for the exact same of what I used, you can pause and do a nice quick screen grab, and that'll tell you what the relays are. I use two of them. This does apply to any normal household furnace if you're going to do just heat and fan control. So, with that being said, pictures are worth a thousand words. If you need any further help, this is where I will tell you to take the time and still shot the screen because this information right here tells you exactly how to wire up the nest the two relays which absorb the load or the high current load that the nest can't handle and off put it to the furnace now keep in mind the two relays are done at the furnace so no matter how this picture looks those relays do them inside your furnace if you have a newer furnace with a pc board this is not an issue in my case an older forced air furnace with just mechanical gas valve and the heat sequencer relay. Again, it was too much. So, and at this point I've come to find out that from what I could figure, the overcurrent is anything over a half amp because whether I tried the heat or the fan by themselves, neither the Nest would do, which almost makes you think it's maybe got maybe a quarter of amp capacity, which is kind of sad. So, the idea of what's going on here, and again, if you don't have at least these four wires going for just heat only, this is not going to work for you. There are those who talk often about the C-wire. The C-wire is the one common side of your 24-volt coil, which also is grounded to the inside of the actual furnace. The other side of it, or the R-wire, that's what gives the power feed. That's what also feeds the power to the relay terminal contacts, which in turn feed back to the furnace. So again, if you can follow these easily enough the way it goes, our AC coils are 24 volts, just like was inside the furnace, and they are turned on by the Nest thermostat. So again, picture worth a thousand words. If you can't figure this out, hire a professional. If your HVAC pro cannot figure this out, hire another pro because you're dealing with a moron. So this is really not hard. The idea with the relays, your terminals are the common and normally open because the normally open and the common will make contact once the relay energizes. So the normally closed, which is this guy and that guy, if you were to put a meter on them or check them, or if you hook up your connections to your furnace and they immediately turn on, you probably have this one and this one hooked up instead of this one and this one. So you've been warned. I can't fix stupid and I can't help you if you're too stupid for yourself. With that said, hopefully this diagram will work wonders for you and get your furnace up and going. If you have AC, odds are you're going to have one more wire going from there to your furnace. Not a big deal because most normal thermostats have five wires. In my case, I only needed four. But again, I'm doing heat only with fan control, so in the summertime I can kick on the fan and have a late, slightly cooler garage. Nothing spectacular, but definitely better otherwise. So, proof of concept. Relays click on, and in this case, they're a little bit of a noisy ones. I'm not the happiest about them. However, 
these two guys are the lifesavers. So, there it is. You end up with a nest and an overcurrent air issue, this is your fix. Put a couple of relays on it, it'll absorb the load and take care of it because the relays don't need squat for juice to get them up and going. So, it's a shame Nest can't be more helpful or offer a small little box with the ins and outs handle that could be easily done with two micro relays in it, but they just tell you flat out you have an incompatible freaking heater or whatever else they want to call it, which is kind of stupid. So, but this is what they get for making this stuff as absolutely fucking cheap as they can. So, this helped you, like it. Comments are disabled because I'm not playing tech support for you guys. If you guys can't figure this out or if your HVAC pro can't figure it out, I don't know what to tell you. So best of luck. Enjoy. See you next time.